Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, I want to teach you guys about this fillable property that we set a few episodes back. And I didn't really explain exactly what the purpose of this fillable property is, right? Because it prevented us from using this uh, create syntax that allowed us to pass an array, right? It was a shorter version. So I want to kind of give you the story behind it, right? So initially, when we were creating our models, we were following uh, this convention, right? We were manually setting every single column or every single property. And while this does work and it's, it, it's very easy, it's a bit longer, right? So you have to type a lot more code. And if you have a very big table or a model with a lot of uh, properties, it's gonna, you know, you have to write a lot of code. So the easier way was to actually pass in an array where you don't have to constantly say idea.content, idea that idea.x. So it was a lot easier, right? But the issue was we had to set our uh, fillable property for this to work. Now, where does this come from? Well, uh, if you remember initially when we were talking about on the previous episode, I mentioned we could use something called uh, request all. It's a built-in function that comes with the request. And, uh, and what it did is it returned all the request variables that the user has sent. And to test it out, I'll go here and I uh, create an idea. And you can see if I use request all, we get all the host parameters, right? Now, what you could technically do, if you remember this content uh, is exactly identical to what we have here, right? So because the names are exactly the same, we could actually go ahead and replace this array with request all and our code will still work, right? So we have removed a lot of additional code by just using this request all, right? And if I go and reload this, it actually works, right? Using request all, and I think I made a typo, it's okay. So this is actually doable, right? Now, there is a potential security risk, right? If Laravel did not come with this fillable property and you could basically, this is called mass assigning, where you update or set up multiple things at once, the user could actually be kind of clever, right? And we have this like variable. They could technically hack our system, right? Cheat the way and manually basically spoof a like request, right? Edit the HTML, maybe add an input, hit an input with likes. And additionally, send a like variable and set it to maybe like 1 million, or some big number, okay? And if we use the syntax and we didn't have a fillable property and Laravel did not check, they could maliciously change the number of likes they have on their application. So it poses a security risk when you do mass assigning with user sent data. If you do it yourself, you're defining every single value. It's not a security risk. But when you're using user sent data, it poses a security risk. So that's why Laravel actually, in order to prevent that, re re uh, requires us to set a fillable property. And what fillable says is basically, hey man, I actually like to mass assign these columns, right? That's what it's saying in plain English. We're telling Laravel, I like to mass assign these whenever I want. And it's okay, it's not a security risk or anything like that. So that's one way. And again, if you use this, it's still a security risk because our likes is actually in the mass assignable, but I'll, I'll show you guys how to fix that in a second. So that's why we have fillables, right? It pre uh, prevents us from mass assigning, you know, basically private user information or something we don't want the user to change. So it adds additional security to our application. Now there is an alternative to fillable. It is called guarded. And I show you guys how it looks. It's basically called protected, uh, guarded. And guarded is the opposite of fillable. So if in fillable we were saying, hey man, I like to update mass assign these, guarded says, a lot of all, I do not want to mass assign these. It's the opposite, right? So I do not want to mass assign ID uh, created at and maybe updated at, okay? Maybe you do never want to mass assign the users. I don't know, maybe they have number of followers. You never want it to be mass assignable because of some reason. So you can define them in the guarded and generally speaking, you only need one of them, okay? one or the other is up to you depending on your situation if you have a very large table maybe you have like 50 columns i don't know defining every single one in the fillable is going to be a bit time consuming and every time you add a new column you need a new update in the fillable it's kind of tedious 
So you could use the guarded, okay, if you, you like. So that's the main idea and premise behind it. And we can actually test this out and see if our code still works. I say test. And you can see our code still works. So using guarded. And again, if I remove both of these, we will get an error from Laravel. It is telling us, token, you know, add fillable property to allow mass assignable. So you do need either guarded or fillable if you are doing a mass assigning on Laravel. So that's the idea behind why we need the fillable and guarded, okay? And what kind of security risk it poses. Now, you can technically avoid the security risk. At the moment, we still have the issue of if we use this fillable, we still have the issue of users being able to mass assign the like and give themselves unlimited likes. The way we can actually protect against that is only mass assign what we have validated, right? So in this case, we have validated content. And we, the way we can get that is actually this validate method returns an array of the validated information, right? And I'll show you guys how it looks in a second. So I say dump. Uh, request and for some reason I cannot type today request.all so first I get everything and then under it I do dd validator so we can compare them so let's test this out uh, I say validated so this one is request all so if the user wanted they could add a like they could add user ID everything to this it's uh, it's not inside our control but this one below it the validated is only giving us content. So it is actually more secure. If the user adds any additional, you know, uh, request parameters, it won't be included here or request arguments. So from now on, I recommend you guys always use this validated variable instead of request all. All right. And I'll go ahead and I do that. And as you can see, boom, our code is a lot shorter. We don't even need this idea here. We can even get rid of that. And as you can see, our code automatically became a lot shorter. And because we are using the same validation here, I think we are actually doing it here as well. We could do the same thing with updates. So uh, the way it works with updates, with Laravel, we can say idea, update, and then pass an array of things you want to update, which in this case, we can use our validated array. Boom. This code is also shorter. Very nice. So this is the idea and the concept behind validated and guarded. And there is one more shortcut. I don't like to teach people this, but you could technically go ahead and say uh, guarded equals an empty array. And what this does is it removes any uh, mass assignment checks, right? So this is basically telling a lot of, well, hey man, I can mass assign anything I want. So this is also an alternative if you really need to mass assign and either set the guard or the fillable, this is the alternative. Although in some cases, this is useful. So I don't want to say you never have to do it. In many cases, it is practical to do it. So if I reload the page, we can see uh, this one also works. So this is also an option. But for beginners, I usually tell them to either set the fillable or the guarded. It's up to you. And that should help you out as well. And an additional step is always use validated and never use request all. If you do both those things you should be good to go in terms of security uh, for the most part and that is it guys i hope this video helped clarify what exactly is uh, fillable we mentioned it multiple times throughout the course and i didn't want to wait longer to explain it i think now we have a good general understanding of laudable to actually know why we need the fillable property i hope you, got, you guys enjoyed this episode and learned something new if you did don't forget to like and subscribe for more content and i see you guys on the next episode have a great day bye